So I think this version of the 2022 Tundra that you're looking at here, which is an SR5 dual cab with the Sport package, is the best looking of the new 2022 Tundras. However, I still think it's a waste of money, and I'm going to show you five reasons why that this thing as a truck isn't comparable to the current generation and my 2018 that I have right now. If you like this video, feel free to hit like and subscribe. If you don't, feel free to hit dislike. Feel free to comment where you agree or disagree, and if you disagree, well, it's okay. You're allowed to be wrong. So I'm on my way to check out a uh, 2022 Tundra SR5 in the Sport model. Um, it is a dual cab. It is the only one they have at the local dealership closest to me. As I talked to the dealership about it, they said all the uh, premium versions have been pre-sold thus far. So I thought I would illustrate this by showing you five functional things I can do in my second gen Tundra that I can no longer do if I go ahead and get a 2022. Beginning with something I haven't talked about yet, which is you can't get into the bed. Red bed here, there's absolutely nowhere to step there to get up into it. Kind of odd, strange thing that they did there. Pretty odd right there too. One of the things you can't do in the new Tundra that I can still do even over 50 years of age is have the agility to go ahead and get up into the back of the truck. In the new Tundra, there's absolutely nowhere to do this. So in that new Tundra, there's no way to go ahead and do that to get up, to get things into the back, pull them out, stack things deep in the bed that you need to go in and grab. Doesn't make any sense at all in a full-size pickup. Reason truck. number one, it's a waste of money as a truck, is that I can't get in and out of the bed of this 2022 Tundra unless I carry a stepladder with me everywhere I go. And I travel a lot. I travel across country. I travel with a lot of gear. I also travel with a generator in the back. Now, if you're not going to offer me a generator like on board, like Ford does Toyota, at least make sure you have enough room for it. Unfortunately, the height of the new bed is 20.9 inches, and my generator is 21 inches inches. Doesn't really fit into the bed of this Tundra very well. Reason number two, it's a waste of money and this is a bigger deal than a lot of people think, is the turning circle. The turning circle went from 44 to 48.6 feet in the double cab and the crew max, which have the exact same wheelbase as the previous generation Tundra. This makes no sense. It makes this vehicle much harder to park into small spaces and to do so, this. This is something you can't do in the new Tundra that you can do in the old Tundra. And it's this right here. You can't make a sharp U-turn in the new Tundra. Now this is illegal in my state and I'm not talking about that U-turn I just made. I'm actually talking about using my phone while I'm driving. As you watch me pull into this tight parking space between two other vehicles, one of the things that's always been great about the current gen Tundra is that you were able to pull into these spots without any real difficulty. The new gen Tundra just isn't going to be as capable of that. You're going to be doing a five point turn to get into spots in the parking lot. And for that reason, it's just not as useful to me and it's a waste of money. Reason number three, it's a waste of money is the stupid length of this vehicle that it now has. My garage, is 21 feet long which is standard in America between 19 and 21 feet 150 inches or 20 feet 10 inches a normal US garage is between 19 and 21 feet in length you of course can get them longer the door shuts at 247 the problem is if we look at the numbers highlighted in blue the double cab with the uh, six and a half foot bed and the crew max with the five and a half foot bed are the only two vehicles that will even conceivably fit into my garage, but they're not leaving enough length to actually get in and get around the vehicle once they're inside. The double cab with the eight foot bed won't even fit in my garage and the crew max with the six and a half foot bed won't fit in my garage with but a half inch to spare on either side. Now let's take a look at my Generation 2 Tundra at 228 inches in my garage. So one of the things I can do with my Tundra that you can't do with the current gen is park it near enough the garage wall. As you can see, there's a little bit of space there that you still have enough room with the garage door closed to actually walk around the truck and get by freely to the driver's side to open the door course you can't do that in the new generation tundra so 
with approximately one half inch of space between the front of my truck and the front of my garage wall. We go about to the back here, between where that handle is, right there, and the edge of my rear bumper is just under 17 inches. Let's go ahead and back up five inches for the 233 length of the new Tundra and see where that would put us. Of course, as expected, it tells us just under 12 inches, but the problem there is with 12 inches, as you're squeezing by, are you going to catch yourself on one of these hinges, tear your clothes up, or are you just going to rub against a garage door or a dirty car and get everything all messed up before you get into your vehicle? In my opinion, a sixty dollars to $70,000 half ton that won't fit into most American garages is a waste of money. Reason number four is the tighter cabin. Who wants a tighter cabin in their full-size pickup, especially one with bigger dimensions? The front cockpit here is definitely smaller than it was previously. Um, definitely has a uh, feel more like being in my wife's GX than it does being in my current Tundra as far as spaciousness goes. Um, that's just what it is. I have this passenger seat set to where I would be comfortable at six feet tall riding in it. And let me show you the, the back of the dual cab here. This is, this is this is the space. I don't know if you can see that there, but I would say that's about three and a half inches, right about the width of a two by four that you could get in there. Um, you definitely couldn't get an adult person in there. And look at how upright these back seats are in the dual cab here. Um, again, don't have a crew max available to look at today, but this is the dual cab. Here's your glove box storage. You have kind of this empty section up here, and then uh, the glove box down here, which is, uh, fairly tight and fairly small in comparison to what's on the current vehicle. The storage bin seems to be a uh, pretty decent size, not as big as the current Tundra, not as deep as the current Tundra, but still reasonably well sized. And it's got a few extra little uh, tricky compartments up here. As they well. didn't have a crew max for me to look at today. They only had the double cab, but watch me get into the back of my crew max here. Unfortunately, the new crew max has an inch less in the front and an inch less in the rear when it comes to leg room. They also have less uh, shoulder room as well. Look at how easily I fit in there. You can easily fit someone much larger than myself into this vehicle. So I have my car set at my driving height, which is six feet, um, uh, where I'm comfortable driving it at, which my seat is set in my driving position right there. And as a six foot adult, it leaves an enormous amount of leg room here. You could even put a six four adult back here, six five adult. I know that because that's what my son is, is right between six four and six five. And sometimes he'll ride in the back seat when he gets in there behind me without any problem at all. Reason number five is the infotainment system. Toyota is going to charge a subscription to fully utilize your infotainment system in the new generation Tundra. I don't need to do that. In my previous generation Tundra, everything works just fine. That's right. It's going to cost you eight bucks a month or 80 bucks a year if you actually want to use the navigation that Toyota has pre-installed in your vehicle. So apparently you're not purchasing the navigation. You're just purchasing something that includes a subscription. This is the fifth reason that this vehicle is a waste of money compared to the previous generation. You know, I might even throw one more bonus reason in. The fifth reason is that giant mustache chrome grille on the upper trims, the Limited, the 1794, the Platinum, it's really hard on the eyes. One of the reasons I went with the Platinum in my 2018 was that it offered a color matched grille. So for being a much uglier vehicle in the upper trims than the current generation Tundra, like my 2018 Platinum that you see here, this new generation is a waste of money.